What's up guys, Don here, and this will be another tutorial. It's been a long time since I made a tutorial, and I think I've already pried open the 12 principles of animation. I've already talked about straight ahead and post to post, so I'll now show you the 12 principles of animation. But for this video, we'll only talk about timing and easing. First of all, disclaimer, I'm not a professional animator and I don't have a degree or anything like that in animation, so take this tutorial as something that you would learn because at the same time we're both learning this topic. So yeah, if I did say something wrong in this tutorial or anything, I'm not trying to be the best out there, so please correct me if I said something wrong about the topic itself. Now going back to the tutorial, I know that by now you know what an animation is, but in case you don't know, an animation is a series of pictures exposed in a short period of time giving the illusion of movement. A good example of this is a flipbook, but we do still feel and see the sense that the drawings themselves are moving, if you flip fast enough. But in traditional animation, that's not a problem because we have this thing called FPS, frames per second. Most standard animation film stick with 24 FPS, but for Pivot, we will use 18 FPS. As to why is that, I can't really explain the science behind it. It was said that an average human being can catch up to a certain amount of speed in change in their perception. A good example of this is how there are phenomenal moves in anime where the characters can't see how fast they're moving. Another one is when you're playing a game and you're suffering a low frame rate and experiencing lag. Or if you have too much frame rate, more than 24 FPS, maybe around 60 FPS, you'll feel like everything feels too smooth for you and it will take a bit of time to get used to and if you did get used to it, you will look at real life like as if it's lagging or something. But again, if you're animating in 60 FPS, that would be really strenuous because you will have to make 60 drawings per second. One minute and you already have maybe around 60 times 60, that's, I don't know, 260 million drawings, I'm not sure, but you get the point, right? So what does timing have to do with this? Knowing how many frames you are going to use per second will let you know the timing of a certain movement. In traditional animation, they can make the exposure of some frames doubled. This is what we call twos. In Pivot, you can do that here, where you can repeat some few frames that you want to be repeated in your animation. So back then, instead of having 24 drawings per second, they'll only have to draw 12 frames. And it really did took off the half of the workload. Now, what is easing? But before we talk about easing, let me talk about spacing. Spacing is the distance of change from the previous frame to the current frame you're working on. In traditional animation, it is usually presented by a line chart. These lines here present the frames. Sometimes they're accompanied with numbers. This long line here is just here to present the line being divided. The gap between the frames represents how much change has occurred between the two frames. The larger the gap is, the larger the spacing, and the smaller the gap, the smaller the spacing. Now, so that we don't get confused between timing and spacing, here's a chart that I found in the internet that I remade myself. Here it indicates that if you want something to go slow, you will have to use a lot of frames with small spacing as shown in the example, and if you want something to go fast, you will use fewer frames with huge spacing, as shown in this animation. Going back to easing, easing is the acceleration and deceleration, basically slowing out and slowing in. There are a number of things that move in this certain way. A good example of this is a car in real life will not instantaneously start at 50 miles per hour. It will need to accelerate to that certain speed and same goes to stopping because if you instantly stop, there's gonna be an inertia. And if you just don't animate the inertia, it will feel a little bit weird. So it will need to slow down before getting into a full stop. Now going back to the line chart or more correctly known as timing chart, you can observe that usually the spacing at the ends of this timing chart are smaller and it's slowly increasing and decreasing and in the middle part it has a huge spacing. This represents the acceleration and the deceleration of a movement. For now, we will use this pendulum animation I made as an example together with its timing chart beside it. 
If you have an even spacing, meaning that the spacing are all the same, it will feel a bit mechanic or robotic. If we go ahead and make each of these frames shake a little bit, it will feel like it is from straight up a gear or it is moved by something that is ticking. And if we go ahead and add more frames, it doesn't really fix anything other than that. It just makes things a little bit slower. Now what if we make the ball gain speed when it's going down? Now it feels a little bit better. What if we do the same thing but when it slows down when it comes up? Now it feels like it's being dragged down by gravity as if it's tangible to reality. Now of course let me show you a bad example of this. What if we did the opposite instead of gaining speed, we will make it lose speed at the middle. Now, of course, it doesn't work that way. Basically, this is animation at itself. You will have to learn where to slow out and slow in, and the same way with accelerating and decelerating. Now, of course, in the end, we want to exaggerate things a little bit more here and play around because we want to improve ourselves. Let me see what we can improve on this. And... Ta-da! It's quite, I guess I can still add a little bit more here and there, but I'm quite happy on how it turned out myself. And if you want to go ahead and try it yourself, I don't really mind, but you will learn a lot of things when you do so. There's a lot of ways to learn more about easing in and easing out, and you will learn more about it if you try and observe and see how certain objects behave. A good example of this is how the ball wouldn't bounce this way but instead it will bounce this way because it will try and slow down when it's up in the air. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and learned more about animation in this tutorial. Some of the files will be in the description but if you're watching this in Patreon all of the files that has been used in this will be available for you. And I would